Hey guys, uh, my name is Julia and I'm from the channel Reader's World and today I'm going to be recommending you Ramona Blue by Julie Murphy. Now Ramona Blue follows a young girl by the name of Ramona Blue and she lives in this town and her family's kind of in poverty because they've been heavily affected by Hurricane Katrina. Ramona starts off the book identifying as uh, a lesbian but as the book follows through she develops feelings for her friend Freddie and this book kind of um, brings in the topic of how fluid sexuality is and how as you identify as a different sexuality and it talks about the fluidity of it. I feel like this book uh, was very very beautiful. I felt that it talked about a lot of things that many people who undecided or figuring out that they can be as different sexualities as much as they want. They can be whoever they want to be. Um, they can change and you don't have to be one just label. The characters are also really good. They are very relatable and Ramona is also a great character you can get behind. She's very very relatable and enjoyable. And this book dealt with a lot of serious topics, which I felt was very, very good. And it is a very beautiful story. So if you have the time, please, I recommend Ramona Blue by Julie Murphy. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Steph from YouTube.com slash Steph Okay. Hi. So I'm here to recommend a queer book that I recommend a lot, and that's Symptoms of Being Human by Jeff Garvin. This story follows a gender-fluid teen who is dealing with not being out yet, moving to a new school, dealing with a father who is in politics. Just a lot of stuff combined all at once. On the advice of a therapist, Riley starts an online blog and starts writing posts about being a closeted gender fluid teen in high school. And suddenly it goes viral. There's some, there's followers coming out the wazoo. There are people commenting and replying to posts that Riley makes. And it, just, it escalates. Not only do we have a gender fluid main character, there's also other, um, there's other representation in here as well. I believe there was a trans, there's trans representation, there is, I believe just gay representation in general as well. But I know there's trans, there's a, few, there's a few transitioning characters in here that you'll meet. And I thought that was really cool too. There is a whole support group. There is, there is good representation in this book and I really wish more people talked about it. Towards the end of this book, there is a trigger warning for sexual assault. It doesn't go too graphic, too into detail, but it does happen. So you do want to watch out for that if that is triggering to you. Otherwise, I think this is an amazing book about a gender fluid character. I, th it's, I think it's done so well, and I think the research was done so well for this book. I really love it, and I really, I just really love it. If you get a chance, you should definitely check this book out. Bye! So, I'm Lauren from the channel Random Reader, and I'm going to be recommending Our Own Private Universe by Robin Talley. So this book is absolutely fantastic. This is a book I read about a year ago and it's pretty cute. And so this is about a girl named Aki or and she is bisexual. And so she goes to this church camp because she's kind of experimenting with her sexuality and she ends up being interested in this girl and they keep flirting and having this cute back and forth and she's only dated guys before but she's known she's bisexual but this is just kind of a new experience for her. So Krista is a bit more experienced, and so of course they envelop in a relationship, and it's really cute, it's packed with diversity, and it's just kind of a fun summary romance. And so it's a female-female romance, and it has a gay character, and also some Hispanic characters, and it's just a very diverse story that I think more people should be picking up. So I really recommend this book. I had so much fun reading it. It's a little graphic in some parts, but I think it's overall a very cute description and it really tackles important issues like homophobia. And I think you guys will like this book. So if you have not read this book, check it out. I can't fully speak for the representation, of course, but from the reviews I've seen that it had pretty good representation. So therefore, I'm gonna recommend it to you. So I hope you guys enjoyed my recommendation and dive in because very underhyped. Go pick it up now. Hello everyone, my name is Gabby and I'm from the channel Gabby YA Books and the queer book that I'm going to be recommending to you in this video is White Rabbit by Caleb Rarig. This is a mystery thriller book that just came out at the end of April and within the story a gay couple is prominently featured. So this story follows our main character Rufus and he's at a party on the night of 4th of July. The next thing that he knows his ex-boyfriend who absolutely broke his heart shows up at this party, seeks him out and then he gets a call from his sister that she's in trouble so he goes and tries to find 
find her and when he does she is covered in the blood of her boyfriend with a knife in her hand next to his body and there's blood everywhere and so the question now becomes did she do it did she not and Rufus ends up investigating this murder and all the other people who were at this party where the murder took place and trying to figure out who was responsible and why they did what they did and alongside of that Rufus is also having to deal with his feelings for his ex-boyfriend Sebastian and trying to reconcile the horrible breakup that happened between them and trying to be able to come to some sort of closure and also then he's dealing with family issues and economic troubles so he's got a lot a lot of things going on which makes this story incredibly fast-paced incredibly action-packed there's lots of twists and turns you never know what to expect and this book is also written by a queer author so if you're looking for an own voices novel with queer characters written by a queer author I would definitely recommend White Rabbit because I feel like a lot of the YA novels that you read that are queer are usually contemporaries and so if you're looking for something a little bit different I would definitely recommend White Rabbit. Caleb is such a phenomenal mystery thriller writer. I absolutely love his other book Last Scene Leaving which I would also recommend as well but this book definitely blew away all of the expectations that I had from his first book and it just made me fall in love 10 times over. The characters are so well written. They feel like teenagers. They're messy, they're complex, and they're gritty and the story itself is so interesting and so much fun to read. I finished this within like a day and a half because I just got so sucked into the world and to the characters. I would definitely check out White Rabbit. I'm Madge Kamali from the channel Madge Kamali and I'm here to recommend my favorite queer read. I personally identify as queer or bisexual and so I am therefore more drawn to books that have a bisexual representation in them. I Hate Everyone But You by Gabby Dunn and Alison Raskin. This book came out last year and it's fantastic. It's a YA book told completely through text messages and emails between two female best friends as they separate for the first time in their life to go away to different colleges and one of the friends is struggling with coming out as bisexual and she is struggling with the label and is she a lesbian is she straight and the pressure from heterosexual and homosexual communities of not gay enough not straight enough and just her journey and the way she accepted bisexual and then owned to that label and it just really resonated with me and my own coming out story and that's why I personally recommend it because it's a angle of bisexuality we just really don't see that often a lot of times bisexuality you just see it because one character decides to fool around with a girl or you know something along those lines but this is one of the first times when I really got a nice in-depth female bisexual coming out story and I really really appreciate it there's also some transgender representation in here which I again also really connected with because one of my partners that I was very very passionate about back in college was transgender and we got a lot of scrutiny from people. This book really connected to me on a deep personal level but I think it can connect with lots of people. I also think it's a good book to read if you have a queer friend or a friend who's just come out because the other character in this book who is not queer is struggling with you know the appropriate way to talk about it and she's very ignorant at times and learns how to be more aware of you know the queer community and queer rights and coming out stories and it's just an all-around beautiful read and I highly recommend it. Um, it's written by Gabby Dunn and Allison Raskin who are two amazing women from YouTube and it's just and its own voices because Gabby Dunn who is a co-author of this is bisexual in real life and it also has some mental illness representation in here too. It deals with OCD and Allison Raskin the other author is own voices because she has OCD in her life so it's just like an all-around fantastic book on so many levels and I so highly recommend it and yeah so that's it. Hope you enjoy and have a match for the rest of the week. Bye! Hey guys my name is Simone from the channel Me Simone and I and my LGBTQIA plus recommendation um, I actually have two and they're very very different so the first is an adult um, crime mystery thriller kind of book um, and that is and that is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Stieg Larsson which, which is the first book in the Millennium Trilogy the reason why I think this book is so important and books like this is because sometimes I feel like when we talk about um, characters um, on that uh, within that group um, a lot of the time it is the main focus of the storyline um, and it actually the second book I'm going to recommend it is um, the main focus of it but I also think it's important to have books where um, it's just part of it and it's not a case of them trying to figure out you know um, who they are and um, finding their place sometimes you know it's just an, it's a case of having a general story that has people who have come to terms with it or didn't need to come to terms with it or 
it's just part of who they are. So um, in this uh, storyline, if you don't know what this is about, it follows um, a, a man named Mikael Blomqvist, I think I'm saying that right, he's Swedish, and um, he is trying to figure out um, what happened to um, a girl named Harriet who's gone missing. Her grandfather has hired him to find out what happened to her. And so the LGBT element comes into this where um, his a lady that he that helps him named Elizabeth Salander who is a hacker and she is also very very intelligent she is actually um, bisexual so she throughout this um, has um, relationships and sexual relationships with both male and female characters and but it's never talked about it's never in, in terms of it's never made a big deal out of it's just she's sleeping with a woman or she's sleeping with a man like it doesn't have a particular sway either way like you don't have it doesn't it's not a case of her worrying about either of those things or anything like that it just is the way it is and that's why i love this book i think it's a really important um read and i just love the story as well it's really great and then the second one i wanted to recommend is um a ya book called if i was your girl by meredith russo and i gave this book a five star when i read it i thought it was amazing it follows a girl named Amanda Hardy who is trans and in her old school she was known as Andrew because that's the, the name she was when she was born but she um, has transitioned and so when she goes to her new school she um, hasn't obviously hasn't told anyone that um, she's trans and then she falls for a guy named Grant and it's a case of her trying to figure out what to do, whether to tell him and those sorts of things and this is what I mean by it's a story that is about the her coming to terms with being trans and her coming to terms with her relationships now that she's trans and how people will react to that. I loved it, it was really interesting, 100% recommend. Hi, my name is Jess and I am from For Me To You Video Photography and Book Reviews. It's a blog and also a YouTube channel. Um, I am here to talk to you about Calling the Play by Samantha Kane. And it is not your typical LGBTQ um, novel because it is about a menage romance um, that is with Randy, a girl, and then two guys. There's Ty and there's Brian. And they, uh, Ty is a quarterback in a football, um, the Bir Birmingham Rebels uh, football team. And then his coach is Brian, who is his ex-lover. And then there's Randy. Well, as I said in my write-up, Randy and Ty have a whirlwind relationship that changes when Ty's ex-lover Brian, the one that got away, comes back into Ty's life. Um, and then they basically all try to decide on how they can make the relationship work. And what I also said in my book review for it was exciting, fun, silly, erotic, charming, sweet, tough. These are the few words that I described and why I fell in love with this novel and its wonderful characters. I could not get enough. It is a standalone within a series. It is the second book in the series. And if you are into that type of thing, I definitely recommend you check it out. It is a very unique, fun, romantic read. So that is my choice. And I, if you're into it, I hope you enjoy. Hope you stop by my channel. Have a good day. Hey guys, I'm Melissa from the channel The Bookish Babbler, and the book that I'm recommending to you guys today is Beneath the Surface by Rebecca Langtem. This is the first book in an, in an adult science fiction series, and I absolutely love this book. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Basically, it follows our main character, who is a lesbian, and her father is um, a very powerful sort of politician governor. He decides to go and teach at this community that houses these immigrant aliens. Because in this world, essentially, it's set on Earth, set in the far future, and this group of aliens started immigrating to, to Earth. And at first they were welcomed, but then a bunch of fear mongering started coming up. People were saying that the aliens were stealing their jobs and the aliens were illegally coming to Earth. And it all rings very true to what's going on in America today, which is was really cool and a really like great parallel. But essentially this um, species of aliens has since been put into these sort of compounds, these like enclosed communities, and sometimes humans are sent to teach them to make sure that their, their version of history is taught to the young alien individuals. So our main character goes to one of these 
sort of compound communities to teach and she ends up um, meeting and kind of starting to like a female alien at this compound who is also a lesbian. Also, this alien species is gender fluid, so basically none of the individuals in this species is born with a specific gender or identification, and as individuals of this species start growing up, they can decide what they want to identify as, if they want to identify as anything, and they can change that identification at any given moment. It's all very fascinating and very well done, and I thought it was just a really amazing way to normalize um, something that should be normalized and that is talked about in this world where the main character says that like transitioning and like um, transsexual individuals are accepted and embraced and in the human world but this sort of concept of gender fluidity still isn't quite a thing that is fully understood in the human world and these aliens their entire species is like that so it's a very interesting dynamic and I really enjoyed that we also have a bunch of sexually diverse side characters as well and I just really enjoyed this book and I definitely think if you're looking for a new super diverse super fun science fiction read definitely check this one out it's available for like 99 cents on the Kindle store and just please do yourself a favor and pick it up because this book was fantastic hi guys my name is Hannah from PS I love that book and today I want to recommend to you my favorite high fantasy LGBT last book and that is Captive Prince by C.S. Barkat. This book just blew my mind. I know there are quite a few controversial uh, opinions out there but you just have to believe me that it's just if you like fantasy, if you love LGBT books because of course you do, that's why you're here, right? You have to read this book. So this book is about the prince called Damien whose kingdom is taken over by a bad man and so he ends up being shipped to an enemy kingdom as a slave. However, they do not know who he is and so it prevents him from dying and he ends up being in the arms of Laurent. And Laurent is a prince of that enemy kingdom but it is ruled by Regan, his uncle, who is a really twisted evil man. An interesting thing here, Damon once killed a brother of Laurent in a battle. It was a battle, it, he didn't know, but of course he has to try not to die. And so even though it's a trilogy, in this book there's so much happening, there's so much culture, so much court life, and it's not the usual court life. Actually, it's pretty violent sometimes, which I really love because this book made me feel like I'm back reading about historical Rome empire, which I just adore. So really this book has it all. It has amazing romance and it's not insta-love, trust me, it's not. And then it has fantastic deep characters that you see developing over time. And another thing I really love about this book is that author never takes an easy way out. She always goes for rich, intriguing story instead of going for what everybody expects, what would be easiest to do. And therefore this book is one of my favorite high fantasy books. I'm a big fan of high fantasy and when I discovered that this series exists. It just made me so happy because pretty much everything I ever wanted in book it is in this one. So of course I highly highly recommend and I hope you're gonna end up picking it up. Hi I'm Sarah and my channel is called Books for Tea and today my LGBTQ plus book that I would like to recommend is Ramona Blue by Julie Murphy. Julie Murphy is more known for her other book called Dumplin which is actually being turned into a movie but to me, I absolutely love Ramona Blue. It's about a girl who has always identified as a lesbian and feels really secure in her identity until one day she actually falls in love with a guy. And it is a really, really beautiful story. It deals with interracial relationships and privilege. And Ramona comes from a poor family, so it also talks about class and just a lot of questions about privilege were being brought up that I really enjoyed but of course I really really love the queer element. I love Ramona struggling with her queer identity when she falls for a guy and how that affects her and I love Ramona's queer friends and the supportive community that she had. I just think that we don't really see a lot of queer girls in relationships with guys so I really really liked seeing that. I thought it was a very 
amazing story and I would definitely recommend you check this out. Hi there! My name's Rhiannon and I am from the channel Crescent Moon Reads and I am so grateful to Alyssa for asking me to collaborate with her and many other awesome creators for Pride Month. So today I am going to be introducing you, hopefully, to a new favorite and that is Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller who is my favorite author. This book is so, so good, but the reason why I chose to recommend it to you guys for Pride Month is because our main characters, Achilles and Patroclus, are gay. Ugh, beautifully gay for each other. <laughs> and I love their relationship so much in this book. Now, I am a bisexual woman, so my experience is very different from a gay man's, but what I love so much about this book and why I think everyone in the LGBTQIA community should read it is that it is so genuine and heartfelt. We see Achilles and Patroclus feel so many deep emotions for each other. It's not just fluffy romance, although I love, 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 love those books as well, but it is a truly deep soulmate bond between two men. And we see those stories for men and women. We see those hetero relationships all the time. I loved seeing that for the gays in this book. It got me so hype. I also love that it wasn't gratuitous. We see them through the good, the bad, the dirty, and the tragic. If you've ever read the Iliad, you know where this book is heading as a retelling of that story. But I just love how genuine and deep and true to real life relationships their relationship is. It's very intense and passionate, but I just love the many spectrums of emotion that it shows us. It doesn't make them caricatures of a stereotype or fetishize their relationship or be gratuitous with it. It's very real and raw and it just pulls you along in the emotions. And for that reason, I simply adore Song of Achilles and I definitely, definitely think you should pick it up for Pride Month. Hey, I'm Megan from the channel Lunasat and my favorite LGBT plus book is Tosh Hearts Tolstoy by Catherine Ormsby. This book follows Tosh as she deals with newfound fame and the issues that accompany it when the web series she and her best friends create together blows up. This book features so many important themes that are often pushed aside in YA, such as family, friendship, and the online world. Tosh struggles with the wide variety of issues in this book, such as her struggle to continue creating online in the face of criticism, her strained relationship with her sister, and the difficulty of finding a romantic partner given that she herself is heteromantic asexual. This book is so important in the LGBT plus community, especially during Pride due to the constant erasure asexual people experience. I personally identify as gay romantic gay sexual and Tosh Hearts Tolstoy was the first time I had ever seen a part of my sexuality represented in media. The author herself identifies as demisexual and the paragraphs she wrote on asexuality were so wonderful, so accurate and brought so many people, including myself on the ace spectrum, to tears. The experience and feelings Tosh has with regards to her sexuality are reminiscent of so many others and if you are looking to learn more about asexuality, you should pick up this book. And if that doesn't convince you enough, Tosh Hearts Tolstoy also features an amazing portrayal of YouTube. As a creator, it's so easy to empathize with all of the work and struggles Tosh has, and as a viewer, you learn so much about what goes into making a video and everything that goes on behind the scenes. This book also features a little bit of a nod to booktube, considering that the web series Tosh is working on is based on Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. So I hope you pick up Tosh Hearts Tolstoy, and happy Pride Month! Hello, my name is Whoopi, my channel is Slowly Little Ravenclaw, and the book that I will be recommending is George by Alex Juno. This is a middle grade novel that has own voices trans rep in it. I read it for the first time last year, and as somebody who is on the trans spectrum, I greatly appreciated this book, and I kind of wish I would have had this growing up. I think I would have been able to come to terms with myself a lot faster had I had this, and I think it's incredibly important for young people to have access to these kinds of things. Hello everyone, my name is Emily, I'm from the channel Ems is Reading. 
all my social medias are M's is reading, so you make sure you go check them all out. I'm active on Twitter, Instagram. I also co-host a book club called Diversity Readers. Here are the both accounts right there. So my book recommendation is Julia Takes a Breath by Gabby Rivera. I read this book about three months ago and I fell absolutely in love with it. It is about a Puerto Rican lesbian. It is often how it is pitched and like that's like the first sentence of the summary. And it takes place in 2003 and it takes place in Portland, I'm pretty sure. So this girl, um, Juliet, she goes to Portland for an internship for her favorite author who wrote this feminist book. And Juliet really learned what it's to, like to be a feminist and what feminism is. Um, the whole movement and the whole, the whole, sto whole story behind it. And not being a white feminist, being a feminist who is a person of color because there is a difference and in this book you really get to see that difference and you can see the typical white feminist. Um, but overall this book is absolutely amazing. I highly, 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 highly recommend this book. It's just so good. It describes everything so well. I cannot speak for the Puerto Rican representation but I can speak for like the gay representation kind of somewhat um this main character is also in college she just finished her first year of college and now it is summer so just want to throw it out that out there so it is technically ya but it's more on the older side of ya i guess you could say the main character is not 17 she's more like 19 or 20 but this book is so so good and i highly recommend it you should all watch it and make sure you check out my channel thanks Mwah. Hey everyone, my name is Nina, I'm from the channel Demigods Are Dauntless, and for my recommendation, we're going to be switching it up a little bit because I don't have a book for you guys, I have a comic book series. So my favorite queer read is The Young Avengers, which is a comic book series run by Gillen. This is the first volume, it's called Style Over Substance, and it's just amazing in all accounts. So if you don't know, Young Avengers is basically exactly what it sounds like. It's a comic book series that follows this group of six or seven heroes who are all teenagers and they have various powers. Some of them have parents who are Avengers, some of them don't. Some of them don't even have powers, but they're all Young Avengers and that's what they call themselves. And out of those six or seven main characters, four of them are queer. In this volume we have two gay characters who are in a relationship, then in the next volume another character comes out as bi, and then in the third volume we have a girl who comes out as queer, which is just amazing because oh my god if you think it's hard to find queer characters in fantasy, just try to find female queer characters. It's near impossible and I hate it. And then aside from all of those amazing factors, this is just a great read. The plot is great, the characters are amazing, and I just, all around as someone who does read a lot of comics, this is one of my favorite runs of like all time because it's just so much fun and so great to get that like YA perspective on the comic book world. But also you don't have to read any other comics in order to read this. You can, it's perfectly understandable without reading any Avengers comics or anything else in the Marvel universe. So if you have never read a comic book series before, this is your place to start because it is going to be the most accessible and familiar thing to someone who reads YA. So all in all, this is a great series to pick up if you're new to comics or if you've been reading them for forever. And of course, comics are always really fast and easy to get through, so if you want to get through just a bunch of things for Pride Month, this is a great place to start. Hey folks, I am the Lore Daughter, I identify as pansexual, and for Pride Month this year I wanted to recommend to you guys my two favorite short run comics that both started out as web comics and were then compiled. The first one I want to tell you about is E.K. Weaver's The Less Than Epic Adventures of TJ and Amal. It's a road trip adventure that generally goes from about Berkeley, California through Providence, Rhode Island. Amal has a problem at the start of the comic which is that he needs to drive from California to Rhode Island and he's been cut off. So he doesn't have a real good way to fund that trip. And he meets TJ, who is willing to pay for the passage and ride along, but he just can't drive. Two major trigger warnings for depiction of recreational drug use and then mild but tasteful sex scenes. The dialogue for TJ in particular, or Amal's responses to TJ, it is some of the funniest stuff I have ever read. My other favorite comics creator, Corey Handworker. If you're looking for an own voice story, that's where I can recommend Prince of Cats, and it takes place in semi-rural to very rural parts of Pennsylvania near New Jersey. 
and it mainly follows two to four primary characters who are somewhere on the queer spectrum. We have some trans inclusion. We have Frank, the main character here, Francis Murakami, is Japanese American. They are all in high school though. So it is about a year of coming to terms with some of these identities and whether or not they can make relationships work in the very complicated situation that is small town America. So why is that own voices? It's because Corey identifies as non-binary, so they, them pronouns, but AFAB, also identifies as bisexual. The less than epic adventures of TJ and Amel can be found combined into a single volume through Iron Circus Comics. The less than epic adventures of TJ and Amel can still be found on its webcomic host site, as can Prince of Cats. I highly recommend that you check both of them out. It's entirely possible that you might like one style a little bit more than the other. EK Weavers is largely pencil and line sketching and a little bit of gray wash marker. I really appreciate how it's an approachable kind of realism. On the other hand, you've got Corey's style. It looks like watercolor, but it's not. It's called gouache. I think it really works to evoke the tone of Pennsylvania in a small town where everything can be very, very textured and the characters are living in this. Both of these stories mean a lot to me. I hope that these stories will mean something to you as well, and happy Pride. Hi, I'm Kevin from the channel Irish Reader, and I have many books that I would like to recommend to you, like too many, but I'm just gonna limit it to one, like Alyssa asked, I'm just so polite like that. The one I'm gonna go with is More Happy Than Not by Adam Sever. The main character of this book is gay, and he comes to terms with his sexuality a lot, and I feel like this book is a great representation of the mindset of someone in the midst of coming out and with the coming out process. And for that reason alone, I think it's just such an amazing read. Adam Severa's books are fabulous, and I would recommend all of them. But in particular, this one is just absolutely amazing. I related so, so much to it on a mental level, and yeah, I just think it's amazing. Hi guys, I'm Becca from the channel Bookworm Becca, and I have two books that I want to recommend for you guys today. The first one is Symptoms of Being Human by Jeff Garvin. In this book, we follow a teenager named Riley, and Riley is gender fluid, so that was a really unique perspective to read from, and Riley is starting a new school. Their father is up for re-election as a congressman, and at the advice of Riley's therapist, they start an anonymous blog online to talk about being gender fluid, but pretty soon their blog goes viral and someone from school anonymously comments and outs Riley's identity. So if you like Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda, you would probably really enjoy Symptoms of Being Human. And the second book that I want to recommend for you guys is one of my all-time favorites and it is not otherwise specified by Hannah Moskowitz. In this book we follow Etta who is bisexual but she's like friends with a bunch of lesbians so she doesn't really fit in with them. She's black so she doesn't fit in her small Nebraskan town. She's on the heavier side so she's too big for ballet and she is recovering from anorexia so she doesn't look sick. It's just all these things. She just doesn't feel like she's fitting in in her life but she wants to audition for a prestigious school in New York and she decides to do it along with this girl from her therapy group who is a lot more sick than she is but they kind of end up helping each other through everything and I just freaking love this book so much. It's the first book that I read with a bisexual main character so it means a lot to me and everyone should read it because it's very for my recommendation, I have two extremely underrated books. The first book I have is Been Here All Along by Sandy Hall. This is one of my favorite books and she is one of my favorite authors. This book is about Kyle and Gideon and they are best friends as well as next door neighbors. Kyle has come out to his family as bisexual, but throughout this whole book he is struggling with coming out to his girlfriend. On the other hand, Gideon is realizing that he's developing feelings for Kyle and throughout his story he is trying to figure out why and he's just coming to terms with his sexuality 
personality. This book is inspired by the song You Belong With Me by Taylor Swift. So basically this is a queer version of that song. So if you enjoy that, I highly recommend. We also have a character with a learning disability and I absolutely love this and it is a very cute book with a lot of pop culture references and I just really enjoyed it. My next recommendation is True Letters from a Fictional Life by Kenneth Logan. I absolutely love this book because it is like the gay version of To All the Boys I Love Before. This is about a kid named James who realizes when he starts getting drunk with his friends that he starts flirting with his one friend and he's not sure why and it's really freaking him out. He starts writing fictional letters to people he knows, his family member, his friends, and one day they get sent out and he doesn't know who sent them and it's really a crazy ride but I really enjoy this book because of the way it talks about sexuality. I think this is a very beautiful book about sexuality. It's a really good contemporary, has a really cute romance. I really love this book and I wish more people would read it so I highly recommend it. Thank you all for watching this and if you participated in my collab, thank you so much. Go in the description down below and everyone's links will be there. Go and subscribe to their channels and go and pick up some of the books that they recommended. If you're looking for more LGBTQ plus books to add to your TBR, I highly recommend all of the books that were mentioned here as well as mine. I love doing this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if you have a recommendation that wasn't included in this, please comment it down below so everyone can recommend more LGBTQ plus books. Happy Pride Month and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye. Yeah.